Man, I hate the trolley problem. For those of you out of the loop, the trolley problem is probably the most famous ethical dilemma. There's a trolley involved and it's barreling down. I like that word, barreling. It's barreling down the tracks towards five people tied up. Now there's another track here which has only one person tied up, but they're safe for now, since the lever needs to be flipped to change the tracks. But there you are, with that look of anxiety on your face with the lever in hand. The question is, do you pull the lever to change the tracks away from the five people and onto the one person? The reason that I'm not personally a big fan of this dilemma is that it's very abstract and seems designed in a way to favor flipping the lever, because the whole thing is kind of impersonal. You see, another dilemma given to counter the trolley problem is the fat man problem. Same thing here with the trolley heading towards five people, but you can stop the trolley by pushing a fat man in front of it which will save the five others. Here there's a much more personal involvement, making the decision much more thoughtful in my opinion. Regardless, ethical dilemmas like these often highlight a certain ethical philosophy, that of utilitarianism. And Kantianism, but that's another video. But aside from all the memes and general understandings, what is utilitarianism? And how can we apply it to these ethical dilemmas? To answer this, we'll be looking at John Stuart Mill's essay on utilitarianism. Now some of you may be wondering why we aren't using Jeremy Bentham since he came before Mill, and uh, that's why. But in all seriousness, Mill is using this essay not only to explain what utilitarianism is, but also to clear up some misconceptions that have unintendedly arisen from Bentham. Plus, I don't trust anyone who chooses to end up like this. So Mill first addresses this word, utility. It could sound cold and robotic, only really focusing on efficiency. But this is a misunderstanding of the word. To Mill and other utilitarians, utility is connected to pleasure and the lessening of pain. Those who know anything about the matter are aware that every writer who maintained the theory of utility meant by it not something to be contradistinguished from pleasure, but pleasure itself together with exemption from pain. So even if we often think of utility as usefulness or efficiency or practicality, instead think of pleasure. But that's obviously not the entire story. We can't just say utilitarianism is all about pleasure or else it sounds kinda basic. Thankfully, Mill points us towards something called the greatest happiness principle, which he believes is not only at the heart of utilitarianism, but all morals. Utility, or the greatest happiness principle, holds that actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness, wrong as they tend to produce the reverse of happiness. By happiness is intended pleasure, and the absence of pain. By unhappiness, pain, and the privation of pleasure. Utilitarianism is based on the belief that pleasure and the freedom from pain are really the only desirable ends in life. I mean ask yourself right now, is there anything you do that hasn't been done either to mitigate pain or to gain pleasure? If such a list of activities exists, it'd probably be very small. Now some people would say, come on, to say that pleasure and the absence of pain are the only real ends in life is to make us humans look like animals. Well first off, we technically are animals. But Mill also points out that human pleasure is not limited to our animalistic desires. Sure, we get pleasure from eating, sleeping, and engaging in an activity that starts with an S and ends in an X, which I can't talk about because YouTube will demonetize this video. But humans also gain pleasure from the finer things in life, not to sound pretentious or anything. There's pleasure in learning and helping others in achieving a goal and simply working towards a goal, and the list goes on. So let's not equate humans to pigs when we talk about pleasures as ends because as humans, pleasure is pretty broad for us. The next issue of contention regards the quality of pleasures. So okay, John Stuart Mill, who somehow is allowed to have a middle name acknowledged unlike other philosophers. If good actions promote happiness and pleasure and reduce pain, what if you're deciding between two different pleasures and you can only choose one? How do we decide which pleasure we should pursue? Of two pleasures, if there be one to which all or almost all who have experience of both give a decided preference, irrespective of any feeling of moral obligation to prefer it, that is the more desirable pleasure. So let's say we're deciding between a trip to Hawaii or a trip to London. These are our two pleasures in question. We take a group of people which have been to both Hawaii and London and see which they prefer, which is obviously going to be Hawaii, and that would tell us what the higher quality pleasure is. But if there's no unanimous consensus, then we just consider what the majority prefers. It's almost democratic in a sense. 
Now the next important thing Mill wants us to know about utilitarianism is that when we attempt a good action, we don't just consider our pleasure, we consider the overall pleasure in the world. Because if utilitarianism was just concerned about our own pleasure, it may be the most selfish and cruel philosophy out there. Instead we need to consider the effect of our action on overall pleasure in the world. The happiness which forms the utilitarian standard of what is right in conduct is not the agent's own happiness, but that of all concerned. Now you may hear this and think, alright, so every action I do should be judged based on its effect on the entire world? So if I go to Panda Express and get some honey walnut shrimp, I should consider something as disconnected as a random businessman in Sydney, Australia? Do I really have to consider the entire world when I try to act good? Thankfully no, and it'd kinda be impossible for any system of ethics to really make you consider the effect of your actions on the entire world. Because the world is so big and complicated and most importantly unknown for the most part. Thankfully utilitarianism lets us consider the effect of our actions only on those who are actually involved. The great majority of good actions are intended, not for the benefit of the world, but for that of individuals, of which the good of the world is made up. And the thoughts of the most virtuous man need not on these occasions travel beyond the particular persons concerned. So now that Mill has laid out a pretty good idea of what utilitarianism is, he does address many critiques of this system. Now to be honest, some of these critiques are kinda bad. Like so bad that you'd probably consider it a waste of time. Like is it really a critique to say that utilitarians are cold? Is that really something we should use our precious time on this earth to talk about? So out of respect for your time, we'll look at one that actually seems interesting. But as always, I highly recommend that you read the source material yourself if this stuff interests you. Mill addresses a group of critiques that claim that people can do without happiness. Happiness, pleasure, and the avoidance of pain are not really the end goal of all our actions. Because if that were the case, how do you explain people who make sacrifices or people who are martyrs for some cause? Where is the happiness for that person? The answer to this is fairly simple. Those people act not for their own happiness, but for the happiness of others. The end is still happiness, just not their own happiness. Would the sacrifice be made if the hero or martyr did not believe that it would earn for others immunity from similar sacrifices? So if you want to critique utilitarianism, I suggest doing so by questioning the very thing that Mill is trying to protect, its foundational belief. The belief that happiness and the avoidance of pain are the ultimate ends to all our actions. But maybe that belief is irrefutable, what do you think? Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me and Mill. I'm sure he's happy that his essay is being read long after he's dead and buried. Buried unlike some utilitarians. Share your thoughts on utilitarianism below because this will probably be a hot button topic. If you enjoyed the video then like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And with that I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.